Hola amigos y amigas, Javier here for Hum of the Earth. And if you're following the channel for the next few videos, what we're going to be doing is making some full videos from the footage that, that I captured bicycling through Mexico four years ago. So some of the towns that uh, I didn't make full videos of. So that's going to be for the next few videos coming out and then we'll be headed to a new country. Enjoy the video. Dolores Hidalgo's history goes back to the times of the Aztecs, who were regarded as barbaric and inferior to many ethnic groups in Mesoamerica, giving them the generic name of Otomi. It is believed that this word is derived from the Nahuatl word Totomitl, which means bird arrow or arrows that lead hunters. But whatever its origin and meaning, the truth is that it was an indigenous culture that had been present for a millennia, where today stands the town of Dolores Hidalgo in the state of Guanajuato. On that same ground, those hunters founded a village called Cocomacan, or place where they hunt turtle doves. They were colonized, but later they themselves would be a fundamental part of the colonizing of the Bayo region when the Viceroy of New Spain, Luis de Velasco y Castilla y Mendoza, decreed that Otomi families would accompany the Spanish to settle in territories occupied by warlike tribes, serving as a bridge for the sedentarization and subsequent Christianization of the nomads. Started in the colonial era, the first Viceroy of New Spain, Antonio de Mendoza, gave 2,700 hectares of land grants as favor to the Spanish soldier, Garcia de Moron, which included the village of Cocomacan. Don Miguel Hidalgo y Costilla, the founding father, came to the congregation of Dolores in 1803, where his social activity was essential. He developed various activities to benefit the population, such as pottery and carpentry, in addition to planting mulberry trees, vines, hives, and training farmers and art artisans. Father Hidalgo was a cultured and charismatic man. He wove a deep relationship with indigenous people and the mestizo of Dolores, which largely explains the influence he had on many of them to take up arms in the pursuit of a new nation free from what they considered the unjust subjugation of the Spanish. Querito de Dolores, which means in English cry of Dolores, was the battle cry of the Mexican War of Independence from Spain, first uttered by Miguel Hidalgo, who was the parish priest of Dolores on September 16th of 1810. Hidalgo was involved in a plot against the Spanish colonial government, and when the plot was betrayed, he decided to act immediately. After arming the people, he addressed them from the pulpit, encouraging them to revolt. The exact text of this famous Mexican speech is not known, and a wide variety of reconstructed versions have been published. But he may have said in essence, Long live Our Lady of Guadalupe, which was the symbol of the Indian's faith, death to bad government, death to the Gachapinas, the Spaniards. Hidalgo amassed a large popular mob army, but after much reckless pillage and bloodshed, the movement was suppressed, and Hidalgo himself was captured and later executed on July 30th, 1811. Hidalgo's cry became the cry of independence. In commemoration, each year on the night of September 15th, the eve of the Mexican Independence Day, the President of the Republic shouts a version of El Querito from the balcony of the National Palace in Mexico City. Viva Mexico! Viva la Independencia! Vivan los Heros! The ceremony is broadcast throughout the country and is repeated in smaller scale in many towns and villages.
The city was a small town known simply as Dolores. When Father Miguel Hidalgo y Costilla uttered his famous cry for the independence of Mexico in the early hours of September 16, 1810, in front of Nuestra Señora de los Dolores Parish Church. After Mexico achieved independence, the town was renamed Dolores Hidalgo in his honor. Today, Dolores Hidalgo is known primarily for its ceramics industry, started by Father Hidalgo, which provides income to well over half the city's population. The inexpensive and mass-produced output of the town is marketed throughout Latin America and the United States. The central square of the town in front of Hidalgo's historic church is a popular tourist spot. A place of pilgrimage in Dolores Hidalgo for many fans of ranchera and popular music is the tomb of Jose Alfredo Jimenez, one of the country's most beloved singers and songwriters as well as one of the most prolific popular songwriters in the history of Western music. Although it seems like nothing is really happening in the streets and surroundings, there's in fact a lot going on. To the delight of tourists, dishes and ingredients such as mole and avocado have been turned into ice cream sold in the Plaza Principal, the main square, where a weekend atmosphere breathes every day. Students sit on the benches to go over their notes while the smell of pork rind and salsa roja revives the appetite of even those who have only just eaten. With as many museums as restaurants and cantinas, this Pueblo Magico has it all. And that's going to do it for our tour in history of Dolores Hidalgo. I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, despite the frantic camera work that I used to do back then. So I'll be making uh, two or three more of these videos, and then like I said, we'll be headed to a new country. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you're new to the channel, I've got many more videos of Mexico. Uh, there's some playlists of uh, when I bicycled through Mexico four years ago, as well as my most recent trip traveling through Eastern Mexico. You can find the links to those playlists in the description for this video. That time I bicycled through Mexico was part of a larger trip bicycling through Latin America. I've also bicycled through Eastern Africa and Central and Eastern Europe. And I have playlists for all those countries that I've traveled through available on this very same YouTube channel, Hum of the Earth. Alternatively, if you'd like to see an interactive map of everywhere that I've been and all the things that I got to see and do, I have that interactive map available over at my website, followthehumoftheearth.com. Where you can click on the different locations and see the various blog posts and videos that I've made of those places. And if you'd like to follow my continuing adventures, you can do so by clicking on the red subscribe button and clicking on the bell to be notified when new videos come out. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one.